And now I'm happy to take some questions, and I'm told I should start with AP. Yeah, President Biden once again taking out a prepared list of reporters to call from. Joining us now, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, two-part question. One, will Fox News ever lead off the list of questioning? And two, will Joe Biden <laughs> ever hold an impromptu press conference for the remainder of his term? Wow. Uh, when the Houston Texans uh, win another game, maybe, wow. maybe then. Uh, yeah, not, not, not a very good team there. Uh, but maybe then Peter Ducey or Jackie Heinrich will, will be on that list. But no, that, that'll never happen. Jen Psaki will make sure of it. And we've seen this movie before. This is what this president has done going back to the campaign. Not only is he given a handpicked list of reporters to call on, he actually announces it to the world that I am told to call on first. Uh, why why not be the guy who's supposed to be the leader of the free world and just call on reporters at random and see how it goes? But this is how it goes with this president. He is scripted, he is packaged, he is protected, and it's obvious when we watch these so called press conferences, Todd. Well, Carly, let's take hi. A hi, Joe. Let's take a look at other times <laughs> President Biden admitted to using a prepared reporter list. Take a watch. I'll take your questions, and as usual, folks, they gave me a list of the people I'm going to call on. So, uh, Jonathan, Associated Press. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. Yeah, and I, Joe, I think that we're um, so mm -hmm. hyper-focused on every move that the president makes, especially as it comes to how he handles reporters, because we're in the media. Do you think that um, voters notice as much about this and care about this as much as, you know, some people in the media do? Yeah, because I, I, I look at these things called polls, and, and they're very revealing. you got to look beyond just overall approval and disapproval, which is already horrible for the president, mostly in the low 40s, some in the upper 30s. But Rasmussen had a very interesting poll recently. He found that 27 percent of likely voters, Carly, are very confident that Joe Biden is physically and mentally up to the job of being president of the United States. Imagine a quarter of the country only feels that our president is up for the job physically and mentally. Another CBS poll found that a majority of Americans don't think the administration administration itself has the competence, focus, or effectiveness to do the job. And that's the thing, that this pessimism may be stemming from the fact that the president conducts himself in this scripted and protected manner, and he hasn't done one sit-down, one-on-one interview, as opposed to a press conference where he could actually do follow-up questions or press him on a particular issue. He hasn't done that one of those in 10 weeks that is well behind his predecessor in Trump or Obama, and there's a reason for that. He doesn't have any good answers on rising inflation, uh, supply chain crisis, skyrocketing gas prices, violent crime up, the, the never-ending border crisis, hundreds of Americans left behind in Afghanistan. This administration is falling on all fronts, Carly, and it's very clear to many Americans now. You think those numbers are bad? Look at these. 42 percent approve, 54 percent disapproval rating. And then do you think we're headed in the right direction? A whopping 71 percent say we are off on the wrong track. And 71%. Joe, this isn't Rasmussen. This isn't the Federalist. This isn't Breitbart. This is NBC News. Doesn't Joe Biden have to change course, even if he doesn't want to, sheerly for political survival. Change course, maybe get some uh, new players on the field as far as the people surrounding you in that administration. I'd look first at Ron Klain, uh, the, the chief of staff, because uh, clearly uh, he's one of the main influencers in calling all the shots here, not doing a very good job. But no one gets fired, no one gets reprimanded over anything in this administration. Uh, if, if after what happened in Afghanistan, not one person was reprimanded or fired, that's when you know no changes are going to come. And when you find that nearly three quarters of the country believes that we're on the wrong track, that's incredible when you consider there. There has been a very considerable drop in COVID cases and deaths. So the White House can't blame the pandemic like it does in every other situation as far as the way Americans feel. This is about all those other factors I just talked about. But in that poll, Todd, Carly, this is the key thing right here. Even half of Democrats agree that we're on the wrong track. Wow. And if Glenn Youngkin yeah. wins in Virginia, Democrats are going to run for the Democrats hills as far as this administration's his agenda. approval rating among independents is pretty scary as well. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for joining 20s. us. We appreciate it. Carly, congrats on Thank this. You, you get to get up every day now, 1 a.m., so this is going to be awesome for you. Yay. More than happy and willing to do it, Joe. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Love you.